Okay, so everyone, let's take a look uh, now at a demonstration of what Matricon Data Broker actually does for information modeling and mapping. So what we've got set up here is a quick little demonstration that uh, Roger will be running. So Roger from Australia, nice yeah, to there. see you. Yeah, Roger is yeah. one of yeah, our yeah. technical solution consultants. Hey, and uh, yeah, so you go ahead, drive the demo, and I'll kind of explain what we're going to do uh, on the board, just so everybody has the same idea of what we're covering. So. First of all, we set up a scenario where on a plant, we've got, let's say a 3D printer or whatever you're manufacturing. And what the company would like to do is also get some additional sensor information about the health of that device. Now, when you bring that information in using different protocols, so let's say the, the printer's being controlled by a PLC, it's talking Modbus, we need to bring that information in. And also we've got a third party sensor, maybe it's already generating uh, OPC UA information directly on board. So that information is coming in and we're bringing it into Data Broker. So far, the same as we've always done for how many years now. Now the key thing is, when you want to organize your information uh, so that you can attribute whatever's coming from the sensor and tie it to the printer and maybe in your uh, factory to have it as a, the same as like, for example, the production cell or production line in that plant, what we're doing is using OPC UA companion specifications to define the model so then they could be reused over and over, whether it's a custom model done in the plant or you're using a recognized model that's basically standardized across an industry. So in this case, we created a model, let's call it a production cell. And in that production cell, we've got the printer information, which is coming off of our printer, but also we look to tie in the environmental sensor. So we might have things like temperature, humidity, whatever you're getting off the sensor, maybe vibration, to make sure that these, the bearings aren't wearing out uh, within the printer. So once we have this information mapped into something like this, we want to bring that into the actual uh, UA space. So number one, we're doing the this one here, we're going to do the uh, import of the companion specification. And then once we have that type inside MitchCon Data Broker, the second thing we want to do is we want to create an instance of it. So we've got the definition and now we want to start using it for an actual uh, instance of that type. And number three, what we're going to do is take the information that's coming from the devices and we want to map them to the model to identify what is the real world information, how is it mapping and feeding the model that we can use it as an instance. All right, so all of that is happening in MageCon Data Broker. And those are the two, two key features that we are adding in. So I'll walk over now to Roger and he's going to start to drive us through the whole process. So Roger, Thanks. take it away. Thanks very much, Derek. And taking you in a little bit closer to the action, this is Matricon OPC UA Explorer. You can see here we've got a successful connection to the Matricon data broker indicated by the connected status and the green strip. Taking a look down the left hand side, this is our navigation bar where we can configure data broker, view data from any Matricon OPC UA server or any other third party OPC UA server, manage certificates, and put together data modeling and mapping. And this is the area we're going to focus on today. You'll see a logging window down below, which will tell you what's going on for every action that you make. So let's jump into data modeling. And you'll notice two buttons up the top right, instant management and data mapping. We'll come to, back to data mapping a little bit later. We're going to focus on instant management for now. Over the left hand side, we have our types which is where our types are contained. There are some built-in types, but also you will see when we import the files from the node set files, this is where the types will end up. And once we've instantiated those types, the window up above is where our instances will be listed. So let's go ahead and import our files that we need by using the import button up the top right. We've got the option here to drag and drop node set files or browse files. We'll use the browse option. And for this example, I've just placed them on the desktop.
you can do a multiple select by using the shift key and clicking. And you'll notice that we're importing a number of files here. So our production cell is the type that contains both sensor and printer types. And you'll notice uh, also another file that we're importing here. Note that some of your types will have underlying prerequisites that are required. And if you're not sure, check with your vendor or open the file and have a look inside. They're generally pretty easy to spot. The order of the import is also important. In this case, I want our prerequisite file first, then our sensor and printer files, and followed by our production cell file. Let's hit the validate schema button. And all things going well, you'll see 100% success there. We can then hit import. And the system will import the defined files. And we can see four out of four has been imported successfully. So that's good. They're all in there now. OK, so where do we find these types now that we've imported them? Uh, as I said before, we've got our types area down here. So let's have a look under object types base object type and scroll right down to the bottom and you'll see the three types that we have imported there. In this case, we're going to use the production cell type and we're going to make an instance of this to create our data model. Simply right click on the type and choose create new instance. And then go ahead and fill in the required fields. So I'll call this my rod cell. The parent node will use local objects. Type definition is already there. We're going to use type production cell, which we've just imported. The reference will use hierarchical and organizers. And the rest is done for us, so we can simply click apply. And our instance has been successfully created. If we double click on it, we can see that underneath there are the printer and sensor types. And just to show you, we can see down below these line up with the base types that we imported. Even though we didn't create instances of printer and sensor, they are part of production cell type so they automatically come through. Now, it's important to note at this time, we've successfully created our data model, my prod cell. However, at the moment, that's all it is. It's a container for data. We need a way to populate this my prod cell instance with data. And we'll be moving on to data mapping next, which will enable us to do that. So let's head over to the data mapping tab up the top right. And you'll notice in here, we have two options. We've got data mapping dashboard and data mapping. The dashboard is a summary of any existing maps that have been made. And as you'd expect, fresh system, we don't have anything mapped currently. Let's head to the data mapping option. On the left hand side, we have the source data and on the right hand side, we have destination. So this is where we browse for our tags, where we want the data to come from, where we want the data to go to. And once we've chosen both um, source and destination, we'll simply click the map button and the mapping summary items will appear down below, upon which time we can choose those and hit the commit button and that's our mapping done. So let's go ahead and do that now. As you'll recall from Derek's intro, we're going to pull data from two different sources. So if we look under objects, dispatch configuration, 
data sources, we'll see we have plant one and UA sensor. Now this will be different on every system. I've set this up in my system here as those names, but whatever federated data sources you've configured within Data Broker will appear under here. And if we carry on down a bit further, we'll be able to find our data that we need. So in this case, the data from the plant is Modbus. And as a plant engineer, I happen to know the data that I need is located in register four colon two. It's an important point to make at this point in the video that a lot of the time plants will have these type of registers that don't make sense to anyone outside of the plant. To the engineer, it makes complete sense. The data I need is at four colon two, but for anyone else coming in trying to access said data, it doesn't mean a thing to them. And this is one of the benefits of this mapping and modeling functionality. With the model, we can make registers or models of with names that make sense to us, make sense to practically anyone coming into the plant. And we can, with the mapping, move data from the tags that previously didn't make sense into the model that does make sense. And that's what we're going to do now. So I've highlighted our four colon two register on the Modbus side. And now I'm going to expand objects, expand data management configuration, and then local objects. And this is where our instances are contained for Data Broker. And you'll see, lo and behold, we have my prod cell, which we created earlier. And underneath we've got the printer and sensor tags. So in this case, I want to map plant Modbus 4 colon 2 into rotations. So I highlight both left side source, right side destination, and click map. A window will appear. You have the option of changing the instance name. By default, it will appear as is, but you do have the option to change that. And you can click add to queue. For our second tag, I want to move data from a different data source, which will be this UA sensor here. Go to the data folder. We'll use some dynamic data. Scalar in 16. And we'll put that into our accelerometer field on our model. Click map and add to queue. We now have two mappings ready to go. So we can select both of them and click the commit button. And if no error message is received, that is a good indication that everything has gone correctly. We can now go back to our data mapping dashboard and see the mappings that we've set up. Going back to looking at the data itself, we can move back to our data view using the button on the left hand navigation tree. And because we've changed the address space, at this point we will right click and choose rebrowse. And what that will tell Data Broker to do is to update our list that we have in Explorer here. We can now go to data management configuration, local objects, my prod cell, printer, and we can pop over rotations and sensor. We can pop over accelerometer. And because my accelerometer data was already producing, it was dynamic data, it's coming through fine. You'll notice rotations is sitting on zero. Nothing's happened there. So if I take you back to where the raw data is located, which can be accessed through dispatch configuration, data sources, plant one, data, objects, 
and then down into our mod bar starter. Remember it was four colon two. And again, how many clicks have I had to do here? Uh, UA models can, or UA address spaces, should I say, could be quite complex and quite hard to find data. And that's another benefit of using the modeling is that you can demystify a complex address space into something that makes sense for you and is a lot easier to get to. So let's go and grab the raw four colon two. And we'll simply drag that over. We can see here it's been created and it's currently got no data in. So let's give this a value. And we'll be able to see once that value is accepted that data broker has mapped it through to our rotations field. So that's it folks, that is how to set up a model and map data into it using Matricon Data Broker. And that concludes our demo. Thanks folks. Great, okay. Thanks Roger, that was great. Uh, so there you guys have it. That's, that's how easily you can uh, map uh, both pull the information models in like we said and you can map the information from the sources again to uh, to the models and then start using them uh, as soon as you connect to Magecon Data Broker. So hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, I encourage you to come to our website, download the, the software. There's a free trial so if you want to try out how that bringing in the models works and how you can actually uh, you know do your own mappings, go for it and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks a lot. See you next time.